And there you have it. Joining us now is Yemi Babington Ashae, the convener and president of United People Global. Good morning, Yemi. It's great to have you on the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yemi, you're welcome to the morning show. Thank you. Uh, the last time I saw you was in Davos when you were with the uh, World Economic Forum. That is correct. And I've, is... I haven't met you since your dad died. So our condolences. Thank you. He was a great nice. man That's and he supported my alma mater. Oh, you know, fantastic. and uh, you know, we remember him with a lot of respect. Thank you very yeah. much. But very tell cool. us, what is this towards a greater uh, Lagos project? What is it exactly all about? I know you, you know, I've li watched the clip. Yes. Uh, transportation, health, environment, yes. entertainment, tourism, yes, you know, right. and can you tell us a little bit more about it and your collaboration with the Lagos State Government? Okay, so it's an event in October, 23rd to 25th of October, and what we're doing is bringing together people who love Lagos, who love Nigeria, or who love Africa, and we're saying let's all come together, bring your expertise, bring your networks, and let's focus on the priorities of one place, Lagos. Obviously, Lagosians are central, but there's also many more people that Lagos matters to. Um, so, of course, Nigerians, whether you live in Abuja or in uh, Ogun State or in, in Oyo or in, Ab or in uh, Kanu, Lagos is still important to you. Um, but also Africans. Um, Lagos as a city alone, by some estimates, is the fifth largest economy in all of Africa. So if you get Lagos right, there are many positive things that will then touch the rest of the continent. Sadly, if you look at a lot of the, the negative indices that affect Africa, anything from infant mortality to maternal uh, mortality, um, even energy, production and consumption, uh, Nigeria is not really pulling its weight. Um, and so we always say anybody who cares about Africa should actually pay attention to Lagos, because a Lagos, a greater Lagos, will have a positive impact across the continent. It's not just a Nigerian thing. Um, so what's special about, about this is uh, United People Global is focused on creating a world where ordinary people have more voice. We're a foundation, an NGO set up in Switzerland. This is our mandate. This is what we do. We do many events, projects, and publications. Now, effectively, this is one of our events. And the idea was His Excellency's own idea himself. Mm. So he came to Switzerland and charmed all of us talking about how serious he was about his agenda. Um, I shared with my board, and they were like, yeah, I mean, you know he's a politician. I'm like, yeah, but there's something about him I think he's a bit more serious. Um, but he also spoke a lot about inclusive development, inclusive growth. And since you know we care about people, we thought, okay, he's coming in. It's fresh. It's early days. Um, this is probably the time to invite people to say, let's help. Because if you want to move a city forward, it's not one person's job. It's not one organization's job. You need everybody. I don't care if you're a cleaner, a bus driver. There are lots of things that everybody has to do if you want to move to a greater Lagos. And so that's the October event. What happened last night and what you aired was what we call the executive launch. Um, there's a series of interactions, June, July, and August. And these are opportunities to influence what happens in October the sessions that people participate in. Because if you say Greater Lagos, what does that mean? So in June, July, and August, we're asking people two questions. The first question is, where should Lagos set its ambition? That helps us define a Greater Lagos. Obviously, we are using the thematic areas, the themes, the executive priorities set by His Excellency the Governor. So as you said, transportation, um, health and environment, education, tourism. making Lagos a greater a 21st century city, entertainment, security tourism, and, and sport, governance. security and governance right at the end. But for each of these, let's pick security and governance. Where should Lagos set its ambition? Do we want to be another Singapore? Or is it another China? Or is it another London? I don't know. It's not, it's not my, uh, this is not about what I think. It's about what the people who care about Lagos think. So I want to ask you, who are these people? Because you've established why such an yes. interface will yes. be useful. It tends to be the elected officials, the government, talking to us or acting towards yes. us. It's a monologue. It's not a conversation. Exactly. But who are the people? Who are the stakeholders? Thank you. So our job is to make this a conversation. And so yesterday was the first step. The next step is actually on Monday. 
and you, you get in a scoop because this is the first channel where anybody hears this. So we have these community conversations hosted uh, by people who care about Lagos. And the first one is hosted in Freedom Park. Anybody can sign up. And the citizens can come. These are listening conversations. Citizens come to talk. Um, like a feedback forum. Think of it as a town hall. So people okay. come and say, hey, this is missing. Uh, but they answer those two questions. The first question, which I started, was where should we set the ambition, whether it's on health. You know, sadly, something like healthcare, I had a, we've already started informal conversations. And once people hear these things, they start talking. So on health, I had someone tell me that last year, she lost her mother and her father to cancer um, here in Lagos, sadly. And talked about how there was trouble with diagnosis, lack of care centers, and, and all the whole struggle. And to those two parents, it's very painful. But as people start to see this agenda, they start speaking, people see transportation and Honestly, since people saw the agenda, I've been getting pictures whenever it rains in Lagos. Yeah, I mean, transportation is key, and I see flooding and all sorts of stuff. And um, I mean, there's so many anecdotes. Sadly, security, things like kidnapping is now a business you know, model for some people. Um, so the community conversations are a chance for everybody to participate. You don't need a degree. So we would love you know, anybody and everybody to come in. But that's one, and they're open. The next thing that's happened are the expert consultations. So these are people who are active in a domain. This one is by invitation only. But if you're interested, contact us. We'll give you an invitation. Contact you where? Um, you can go to uh, unitedpeople.global, contact, and we'll get your messages. Um, um, so you contact for the expert consultations. The first one focuses on health. And this one is um, on the 19th. That's next week, Wednesday. So anybody who's interested. We have people who said they're going to host consultations on education, each of the thematic areas. And all of these are listening conversations where Lagosians can come in and speak and say, hey, here's where Lagos should set the ambition. And sorry, that elusive second question is um, what people can do about it. So even if you say Lagos should set to be a Singapore, the next question, that second question is, what can everybody do? Because it's not only government that can take action. There are many things that everybody can do. Let me ask you to complete a sentence for me. Um, I've lived around the world, and whenever I travel, I test some things. But there's something that only people in Lagos can answer all the time. So let's try. Okay. Um, there's a saying, every man for himself. God for us all. Thank you. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I travel and people can't answer that. But here in Lagos, everybody knows it. I'm sure you know it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of city do you build with that mentality? That's where I have a question for you on that. What kind of a city do you build with that mentality? Your model here is quite broad. There are a lot of issues that you want to tap into. So how, how, do, you want to, how do you want to go about that with United People Global? Do you plan on taking one issue at a time? Or do you plan on just going in and delving into mainstream issues, but trying to scale yourself to a size where you're actually able to fill all those gaps? <laughs> all right, so there was, there's the movement going on right now. They call the Gilets Jaunes in French. It's called Yellow Vest. And it's basically ordinary people who are fed up, and they're taking action. Now, sadly, some of that action includes confrontation and violence. They're destroying infrastructure. Um, I think it's fair to say that in many places in the world, people have had enough. And the opportunity we have with Towards a Greater Lagos is we give people a positive path to take action. It begins with voice. And the way the agenda is structured is so that everybody can see something that they can do. It's not only government that can do things. So even though government has set the priority, there are things we can all do about security and governance. There are things we can all do about uh, even transportation. Government can do a lot. But the way we structure this is voice, we all weigh in, and then we can all take action. Now, before you ask your question, <clears throat> I was sharing with you about the, the saying, every man for himself, God for all of us. Like, last night, His Excellency the Governor talked about culture and how culture is very important if we want to move to Greater Lagos. Now, what kind of culture do you have if the saying you believe in is every man for himself, God for all of us? You don't have to go far in Lagos to see this saying in action. In fact, every street intersection, you can see it in action. It's not just in the marketplaces. It's literally every man for himself. You don't build to last with that culture. 
Now, the governor alone cannot change it. If we want to build something else, many people have to decide we want to move. And here, everybody has power. You don't need to be the richest person in Lagos to influence culture. When somebody at the bus stop is kind to somebody else, I tell you today, this morning, on our way here, we're trying to cross the bridge. And our car had a disagreement with one car. So eventually, they settled it by letting the bigger car go. And he tried to go in behind. But the person behind didn't let our car in. And the guy in front saw that. So he now stops, and he waves our car over. So we now skip. The person behind who didn't want us to go, we went ahead <clears throat> and went in. Now, that was really nice. So of course, we said thank you. But they didn't have to do that. Now, imagine that kind of culture becoming pervasive, where we are taking care of each other, where it's no longer every man for himself, but rather, I am my brother's or my sister's keeper. Well, we build must, a different society. I must point out to you, though, <coughs> that Nigerians are very religious people. Exactly. So when they say, God for us all, yes. you know, uh, the usual thing in Nigeria is to hand over Nigeria to God. Yes. And everybody says God will take care of it. And that's why they are in church half of, half of the time, you know. But I know that United People's Global, you know, is doing, uh, is having a similar project in about 10 cities. Yes. Uh, yes. Is Lagos your first city you are focusing yes. on? Uh, is it a pilot project, you uh, know, to serve as a basis for other cities? Which, city, which other cities are you looking at in 2019? And what is the criteria uh, for choosing, okay. you know, Lagos cities? is plan A, B, and C. Okay. We've come all in with Lagos. Before we chose Lagos, there were some other cities in the mix. I think since this is public, I probably shouldn't share it. Now no, there you was... should, you should. <laughs> because I had asked you about criteria. So yes. we'd like to know, you know. If we are we... obsessed with creating a world where ordinary people have more power. So we, in terms of criteria, we want to go where we can move the needle. And as I said earlier in the program, moving the needle in Lagos is very important. And I think it's fair to say we do not want to get to a point where Lagosians are fed up and they decide, you know what? We're going to take action. Because when people are angry, do you think they're going to all stand up and act like Gandhi? or Martin Luther King, or Nelson Mandela? You can, say, you can say yes, but I think the evidence suggests no. The people in France, they were actually very proudly saying, we don't have a strategy. Proudly saying, we don't have a leadership. The French government said, what do you want? They said, we don't know. But they were destroying stuff every weekend. Now, we understand why they're angry. But if you want to make change happen, you need a strategy. You need to know exactly where you want to go. Change isn't always about what you don't stand for. It's always more constructive when you define what you do stand for. Now, through the process of Towards a Greater Lagos, we give Lagosians a chance to say what they do stand for. Now, to your point on religion, I'm also very religious, grew up uh, religious, went to Catholic school. The same God that's taking care of all of us, God blesses our actions, not inaction. The same God that's taking care of all of us made you and her and her and me. The same God put us all here in Lagos. Why? He blessed us with opportunities. He spared our lives. Not for us to take inaction, but rather for us to do something. For so the same people who say God for all of us, God has already provided. And he's asking you to please do with what he has given. And so I would say to the same people, I'm as religious as you are, and God has endowed you with what is needed to create a greater Lagos. Let's get on with it. Now, our role in this is essentially, as you described earlier, as a convener. Um, we have lots of best practices. We have an international board led by the chairman, uh, Madame Grassa Michel, who is Nelson Mandela's widow. We have uh, Arancha Gonzalez, who is the um, executive director of the International Trade Center. This is like the, a global trade body for emerging economies. So they have lots of businesses. And if you look at the governor's agenda, he's very keen on investors. Right? Moving Lagos forward is also about investment. And so His Excellency met with uh, the head of the International Trade Center in Switzerland, and she's already committed to being in Lagos. I have a briefing with her when I get back to Switzerland. Um, I can't give the date because we're public, but <laughs> it's an upper week. Um, and so the engagement is quite powerful. In fact, last night, one of our board members, who didn't tell me, he surprised me and he showed up at the executive launch. Um, I'm sure the camera has captured it because I was just stunned. He, I mean, I gave him an update last night because I speak to them all the time to say, hey, it's going well, here's the update. And he just writes back, good job. 
And then last night he walks in. But just to show you that the board is engaged. Um, and when we had the conversation about the different cities, there was some nervousness about Lagos. Because let's just say Lagos's reputation is not yet where it needs to be at. So they said, shouldn't we go somewhere a bit easier, a bit more familiar? Um, but I, I mean, the arguments were in favor of Lagos because His Excellency came to Switzerland. And we could see that, listen, he's coming in. It's the beginning of his administration. He's proud of the inclusiveness. We are all about inclusiveness. So there was a, a very, very happy marriage that could happen here, where we could come in, set up something independent that can inform his own actions, but also can create a space for people to take action. We don't have to wait for the gov government for everything. So last night when he came in, he sat down. He didn't come in and go to the front. He sat at the back and he was listening. Then he spoke. After speaking, he sat down and listened again. So again, I think the, the, the way he wants to operate is very conducive to the way we want to operate. And I think the most important thing that Lagosians can do is to take action. Well, that's quite is to take action. I would say that there's a, there's a link. I don't know if it shows up under my name. It's uh, upglive.org forward slash tag, T-A-G Lagos. upglive.org forward slash T-A-G Lagos. Anybody who wants to participate well, in a community. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyone who wants to participate in a community conversation, the first one is on the, 11, is on the 17th. Uh, please join us. I think with these things, it's so easy to sit back and say, is anybody going to take action? Is that different from your expert consultation on the 19th? Yes. The okay. expert consultations focus on one topic. And that's strictly by invite. Strictly by invitation. If somebody is interested, um, there's a way you can contact us on our website. Now, what program do you have in October? Yes. Uh, because it's like you have something else, uh, October so 23? All of, this, all of this leads up to October. And what we're doing with these consultations is inviting people to help us define what should happen in October. We know we have the six pillars, the themes. But on health, should we have a conversation about diabetes? Should we have a conversation about, I don't know, general practitioners? Um, on education, I've been, I've, we've started some informal con consultations. That is a big bucket. And people have told me you need to have four separate consultations, one on preschool, because apparently most of the brain is formed before children even go to school. Then you need one on primary, then secondary, and then tertiary, and um, I was told, we also need something for apprenticeships, because not everything is about a university degree. Mm -hmm. And so these are separate conversations. We can't have them all together. But I'm interested in that part of your agenda about making Lagos a 21st century economy. Yes. Now, in Nigeria, a lot is made of the fact that Lagos State GDP dwarfs all the others. Lagos yes. is a big fish in a small pond in that yeah. regard. But for a mega city of this size, we really are punching below our weight on an international level. And you answered a question I'm not even sure that you were aware was asked, that why did the Senate, well, governor-elect go to Davos? He wasn't even elected governor at the time, right? Mm. There was some criticism of that. But you've just said that that is what actually attracted this um, meeting that's going to yes. happen here in Lagos, and it's to Im attract investors. Yes. At the top of this program, we talked about the Irish company, P&ID, yeah. and the disastrous, well, potentially disastrous ruling that they've gotten against the government of Nigeria, $9 billion, and they're going to well, claim our assets and what have you. Yeah. How do we attract foreign investment when even your board member was scared to come to Lagos because of the reputation that it has? Yes, but our board members approved, so they are here. But it's a very good question. I would say His Excellency deserves credit because, to use his own words, he said, I'm not elected yet, but it's not when I'm in office that the job starts. Right? So when you're campaigning, you shouldn't just be focused only on campaigning. You should be thinking, how can I hit the ground running? The words he used was front-loading. Can I start to engage people so that if Legosians bless me with a mandate, we're ready to go? And yeah, he came in and he met people. He woke up at all sorts of odd, like four in the morning, road trips. He worked hard. And to be honest, I was very happy to see, um, I don't know, a very serious ambassador um, from our country and our city. And like I said, he charmed, charmed us to say, let's take a serious look at Lagos. Now, if you want, the other point I want to make is if you want to attract investors, um, I'm an economist. Um, I have undergrad and master's in economics. But there's something that doesn't get said often. If you want to attract investors, make it conducive for the people who are there. Why would investors show up if the people who are there yeah. 
want to leave. You do need to speak to investors, but let's make it conducive for the people who are there. Let me hold that thought. We have to go on a quick break. I will be back. <laughs>